Hey, how's it going everybody? Thank you for showing up for yet another video. Like I said, I'm going to try to bring you a video, whether it's outdoor content or indoor content like it is today. Actually, the sun is just coming out, but it was raining all day. So I wanted to bring you a video to get you into the mindset for turkey season. And I want to talk about how to use a diaphragm call. Now, a couple weeks ago, an old buddy of mine from college had reached out to me asking how to use a diaphragm call, how to make sure your calls sound good, uh, should that be the choice that he goes with, and things like that. So it really got me to thinking if I could give, you know, maybe a half dozen pointers or less to someone about uh, how to choose a call or how to use a diaphragm call, what would I say to them? And when I really got to think about it, there's probably four tips that I would give to anybody when it came to learning how to use and getting started with a diaphragm call. Number one, don't break the bank. Right here I have a Woodhaven, uh, it's like a snake tongue style call where it's got the split reed that drops down through the middle, it's a triple reed. But, I mean, this one isn't super expensive, I think it was the 15 to $20 range. Um, as you get to call more, you're gonna learn what you specifically like. This is a new cut for me and I actually am really enjoying it, but if I had to give any suggestion, I would go with something in maybe the Primos line. Something like that, I remember I used to love the deuce cutter. I will also say, try to get something that's maybe only a double read to start, even a single read. You might not like the sound of it as much as those nice raspy calls that you hear other people use, but a double read or single read is gonna be way easier for you to get crisper notes on until you learn how to use your mouth and your airflow to make the call sound really nice. So, like I said, don't break the bank. You don't need to buy a $30 call or something like that. Get yourself a call that you can play around with. If you lose it, you don't feel all that bad about, and you can just rip on it and start making turkey calls. Get yourself used to it, and you're gonna enjoy calling a lot more with one of those cheaper calls as you're just playing around with it. And then as you get better, like I said, you can upgrade just like anything else. So my next tip to my buddy was, learn how to make turkey sounds without a turkey call. Now, I, when it comes to a diaphragm call, I literally mean try to sound like a turkey with just your mouth. You're probably not gonna sound just like a turkey, and you're probably not gonna walk out into the woods acting like you sound like a turkey, but that'll help your mind understand what your jaw needs to do as you're calling and what kind of airflow you need to have to come out of your mouth. My dad had me do this when I was a kid, and I thought it was so goofy because I thought I sounded like a chicken just plucking around and doing you know, bird stuff but it worked out great for me because I think that I was able to develop a little bit faster in learning how to use a diaphragm call. So it sounds something like this. Some of you might sound better than this and some of you might sound way worse like I did when I was a kid. But all you gotta do is think about what you see the people on TV do and try to reenact those sounds. So like I said, it'll be something like this. You'd be trying. Now, like I said, you might not want to go to the woods trying to sound like that. You're still going to put the call in your mouth, but now your mind and your body and your mechanics are going to start off in a place where you're not overly focused on using a call and you continue to move in the right direction as you introduce the call to your mouth. Okay, so now you have an idea of what you should be doing to make turkey sounds. You've engaged your tongue and your jaw. Now, grab your turkey call. And you're gonna do something, it's another really kind of goofy thing, but it's gonna help you out a lot with understanding airflow and how to make this little piece of uh, latex and fabric, I guess is what it would be, to make some noises. So what I did when I was a kid, I still remember time sitting on the front porch with my cousin Kara, throwing turkey calls in our mouth and making all sorts of goofy sounds. It's kind of like if you ever had a retainer and you're trying to learn how to talk again, throw this turkey call in your mouth and try to say the ABCs. Try to read a children's book while applying pressure to the latex. You still want to have airflow coming over the top of it because that's what's going to give you the sound to come out. Otherwise, you would just sound like this if you were trying to read. And if you were just moving your jaw, but not actually letting the airflow out, you would just look like this. And obviously that's completely pointless because you need to make sounds to call in turkeys. So like I said, throw it in your mouth, 
start to understand how much air you need and how much you don't need to blow over this latex between your tongue and the call itself. Now that might seem a little bit goofy at first, but by doing things like that and understanding how much air pressure you need to put to make sounds come off of this piece of latex is also going to help you down the road when it comes to learning how a turkey call. Now you already know what a turkey should sound like. You've played around with it. You've tried to make your calls with your mouth without your turkey call in your mouth. And now you've made some sounds with the latex. So now to try to bring it all together, you have to put your tongue against the, the reed itself. It'd be sitting something like this, but this being your tongue and you work that motion just like you did when you were just practicing saying your ABCs. But you need to also now learn how long you let it blow over the reed and how short you want it to blow over the reed to make different sounds and how fast to cut it off if you want to leave it, all those kind of things. But with that being said, there's so many calls and it can be so confusing to a new caller because you're trying to make all these sounds. You're trying to look at YouTube videos that have tournament callers you're trying to watch guys like The Hunting Public and Aaron Warbritton that can call, Michael Waddell that can call, and you're trying to reenact those sounds when in all reality, those are way more advanced. These might be people that have been calling since they were eight years old and now they're in their 20s, 30s, and 40s with all that experience of calling. So what I would say is my final tip, learn how to yelp. The yelp is pretty much the most generic and well-rounded call that you can make if I had to have an opinion on it. And that's because your cluck is very similar to a yelp, but much shorter. Uh, and then your cuts, same thing. They're just, the length and duration and pitch is what changes. So if you learn how to yelp, you don't even really have to ever learn those other ones. You probably will want to at some point because it'll allow you to feel out a bird and see if they're excited and you wanna be cutting and doing all this kind of stuff. Or if you wanna be able to just putt and cluck and keep it really quiet and try to keep that gobbler engaged. But if you can learn how to yelp, you will kill turkeys. And that's exactly what this sound is right here. And just like that, simple, maybe three to seven note strands will get you to get a turkey gobbling if you're in the right area and they're feeling it. So. Okay, so those would be my four tips for you as a new turkey caller using a diaphragm. Don't break the bank. Learn what you need to do with your mouth. Learn how to make sounds with your call and then learn how to yelp. After all that said and done, start practicing. Keep the call in your mouth, throw it in your truck, walk around in the woods when you're shed hunting or scouting for turkeys. Always keep this with you. It's so small, it's so easy, it's so light. Put it in a little container and throw it in your pocket, just like how you throw your cell phone or your wallet in your pocket. And before you know it, you'll be a great turkey caller and hopefully killing turkey this spring. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope it helps somebody. If there's anything else you wanna get in depth on, just throw it in the comment section below here. By no means am I saying I'm some world-class turkey caller, but I'm hoping the things that I grew up doing that my dad taught me and little things that I did to get become a better turkey caller will in turn help you. So like I said, if there's anything else you want to know, just throw it in the comment section. If you did like this video and it helped you, please give it a thumbs up and even more so subscribe so you don't miss any of my other videos. I'm hoping to get some turkey on the ground this year. I'm going to make sure my dad gets on one. I'll probably be out with Matt, who you guys have met when I was in Nebraska and some of my other videos, actually the two shed hunting videos. And, uh, and hope with any luck, I'll knock one down myself. So as usual, I can't wait to see you hit your mark. Later guys.